giving to your local church should be easy. And with Tithely, now it's as easy as sending a text. To get started, text GIVE to your church's giving number. You'll receive a reply linking you to the setup page. Securely enter your information, and you're all set. Now you're ready to give anywhere at any time. Just enter the amount, and you'll receive a confirmation text and an email with your receipt. If you've made a mistake, no problem. Just text refund in the reply. Text giving with Tyler. The simplest way to give to your local church.
don't you guys stand up with us? Come now, Lord, like never. 
welcome. Welcome to the family church. Let's worship the Lord. Lord Jesus, we welcome your presence. We welcome your power. We welcome you, Lord. And you are the honored guest. And Lord, we praise your name and we glorify you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. We come to praise you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mind.
Lord, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. want to ask the brothers to bring the flags down to the front. We've been doing this in every service since October 7th. Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that the Prince of Peace would bring an end to the war. And uh, the Bible says, the line of Judah roars over Jerusalem. He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. We know we're also in an election year this year. So let's pray for our covenant nation, America. Originally dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, we're going to take it back. And we're still declaring and decreeing that God's uh, awakening this nation, awakening the world. You can come down if you'd like in our tradition. You want to touch the flags and just join with us. And um, I just want us to pray in the spirit. I want to ask uh, Pastor Mike 
if you'd come down and maybe lead us in the prayer. But, you know, we don't know how to pray, but we know God is working a plan. The Bible says that he's roaring over Zion and, and, and over Jerusalem, the Lion of Judah. That's our theme this year. And, uh, but we know that they that pray for the peace of Jerusalem, you know, God says you will prosper. And we want to see God's will be done, his kingdom come on earth and in earth as it is in heaven. Come on, church. Let's just pray in the spirit for a moment. Let's pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, give wisdom to our leadership. Lord, to the prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, Lord, into the war cabinet. Lord, give wisdom to our president and our leaders, oh God, in this critical hour. We come against every power, every principality, every lie of the enemy. And we pray, let God arise. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Lord, let not our enemies triumph over us. But Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done, Lord, until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Lord, we thank you for your life, your strength. Lord, encourage those that are mourning lost loved ones. Lord, those that still have loved ones and family being held hostage in Gaza. We pray, Father, for the Israelis. We pray for the Palestinians. Lord, for a lot of innocent victims. But, Father, mostly we pray, let the eyes of of people all over the world be opened to learn to know the Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, the only one and true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We give you honor. We give you praise tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. 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 Let me have the house lights here tonight and just want to welcome all of you. Before you're seated, go and greet somebody, handshakes, hugs, bless somebody with a word of encouragement. Come on, this is the body of Christ. Encourage somebody tonight. We want to say welcome. Those of you that are watching online all over the world, thank you for joining us tonight. Listen, there's a breakthrough and a miracle for you as well. There's no distance in prayer. And you come expecting, just like everybody that's here in the house. Hallelujah. We love you. Thank you for tuning in tonight, tomorrow morning, and tomorrow night with our guest, Evangelist Pastor Billy Burke. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. It's the body of Christ alive and well. Are you getting your roar on? We want to see the people of God rise up. You are to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Don't lose your saltiness. Don't let your light grow dim. The world's getting darker. We need more light, more life. God has chosen you to be that light of the world. Hallelujah. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. We want to just greet the 115th class of the Institute of Ministry, 2024, our 10-week School of the Spirit, and uh, we just have uh, seen life-changing uh, impact by the Holy Spirit over the winter season for those that are willing to dedicate 10 weeks of their time in a 10-week God encounter, and uh, just to understand more clearly their identity in Christ, their authority, and their assignment. And we believe that every one of you are called by God to be an able minister of the Spirit. And tonight, I hope you came with expectation. Uh, we're going to see miracles. And how about some of you leaving here tonight as a sign and a wonder? Amen. That would be good. Inquiring minds want to know, is God alive? Well, you are the best uh, sermon that can be preached, the testimony of what God's going to do in your life tonight.
tomorrow morning and tomorrow night, three meetings, great meetings with evangelist Pastor Billy Burke. Been coming here many, many years. I've seen more miracles uh, here at this altar and throughout the house under this man's ministry, a humble servant of God that will also teach you uh, not only what God is doing, but what you can do. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. By the way, I'm Pastor Phil Durstein. I'm my father's son. And um, I want to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if you're a son, you're your father's son. But my father is the founder of Christian Retreat, and it was a revival in my mom and dad's church when I was just a, a young baby uh, that started this ministry. Now we're in our 71st year. 71 years, and uh, here at Christian Retreat, this is our 56th year of nonstop meetings. I don't know of any church that has more services than we do uh, over the winter season. We're morning, afternoon, and night, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, sometimes Saturday, and uh, of course on Sunday, and uh, you may might be sitting on it, but here in the house, there should be this brochure entitled Line of Judah Roar. I want you to take one home with you and uh, just stay uh, in touch with what's happening here every week. A different guest speaker coming in and uh, real happy to have uh, Robert Slaredon back with us as he comes every year. And this year uh, we're teaming up to bring in Lance Wall now. And, um, you know, he's been here before. He was here on his honeymoon. But uh, we want to get him back in this election year. And uh, that was a long time ago, okay? He was here on his honeymoon. But he reminded me of that recently. But uh, I want you to just look over this. Gary and Drenda Cassie will be with us. You see them regularly on television. Tremendous ministry. And uh, many others that, that you will recognize on here. Here's what I say. We bring the guest speakers in on Thursdays and Fridays. That can be between your Wednesday and Sunday services. And some people just want to get out here and percolate more in the presence of God. And uh, your life can be changed. We've had an uh, absolutely amazing year already in 2024. Why not? Why not? You know, let the world's chaos continue, but let the people of God get more in touch yeah. with their creator, their savior. And uh, I've been preaching under this theme on Sunday mornings, Lion of Judah Roar. Say, if you want to get your roar on, What's going to happen, I believe, this year and in the years to come, if God tarries, the body of Christ is going to get more understanding of their identity in Christ. And when you get more understanding of your identity, you'll have a greater understanding of your authority. We're no longer begging God. We are declaring and decreeing the word of God because all the promises of God are yes because of what Jesus has done. But we just have to give the amen. We've got to declare it, believe it enough to declare it. And then you can say to that mountain, whatever that mountain is in your life, whatever the enemy puts there, be removed, be thrown into the sea. And I believe the body of Christ is rising up to really become uh, stronger on assignment for God. Once you know your authority and your identity, you will understand your assignment. Well, praise the Lord. Glad you're here tonight. I'm not the preacher, but I. Uh, I am wanting you to receive all that God has for you tonight. You drove in on Glory Way Boulevard. You're already touched by the fruit of the Spirit. You drove over them. Love, joy, peace. Maybe you saw that. We want everything that you see around here to keep your focus to receive from heaven tonight. Receive from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And uh, tonight, if you would uh, take this brochure home with you. We'll get some more out there on the seats. You can also find it on our website at uh, christianretreat.org or thefamily.church, thefamily.church. And uh, you'll have a lot more information on there of everything that's, that's coming up. So tonight, if you take something else that's on your seat, take an envelope. And I've got to get one myself here. Didn't bring it with me. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, tonight... Because I know there's so many guests here uh, that maybe you came to to see uh, 
Brother Billy Burke. I think tonight I'm going to give us an opportunity to give a love offering at the end of his ministry. I haven't been able to touch base with him yet, so uh, that's how we usually do it. So uh, you'll have an opportunity for a double blessing tonight, tonight only, okay? I mean, and maybe tomorrow night. But I want to be a blessing to the ministry of Billy Burke's traveling all over the world. And uh, we're blessed at his center, um, uh, the World Outreach uh, Miracle Center is up in Tampa here. But uh, you might be seeing him on television, too. He's now on uh, the uh, Kenneth Copeland uh, Network, and I appreciate that. And, of course, you see him on, um, I think he's on CTN, too, and on online. You can see some of his podcasts. But uh, tonight, uh, I'd like for you to sow into what God is doing from this piece of real estate. You know, um, this place was ordained of God in 1968. Uh, we found this property. We'd been pastoring a church in Sarasota called the Tabernacle. Founded that, the Revival Tabernacle, back in uh, about 1957. Uh, and uh, imagine that. Moved down here in 1955 after this revival in our Mennonite church. My father began in a, uh, an old order Mennonite, wore a cut coat. There he is. Billy Burke's in the house. <laughs> to tell you i waited for him one night and he never did show up oh, don't say that and we just had a miracle service without billy burke and god showed up how about that you remember that i don't I <laughs> yeah you got healed of that okay you lost your memory on that that's good <laughs> but you know what that's how that's how we roll around here we don't have a program we're gonna follow the unction of the spirit we want you to get your breakthrough you know, in our Mennonite church, and I know we got some Mennonites in the house. I can generally on a congregation here at any given time. We, we represent about all the denominations. And uh, that's okay. I, I want to say we're not non-denominational. We're interdenominational. We have everybody that has been touched by the Holy Spirit. We value, we value our Mennonite roots. But in our church, we didn't believe in musical instruments. We certainly didn't believe in the gifts of the Spirit, miracles for today, uh, the baptism in the Holy Ghost, or tongue speak. And that was the holy rollers down the road, you know. But my parents started praying for revival. And they fasted, called the church to fasting and praying, mostly young people. And uh, it took one year, and then there was a breakthrough. Nobody went home for seven days and nights. They stayed in the church, came to our house. And uh, it was just a sovereign move of God. Uh, of course, everybody speaking in tongues, prophesying. God was given instructions for the years to come for this ministry. Prophetically, he told my father he'd be removed from the Mennonite church. Told my father to move his family to Florida. We didn't know anybody in Florida. 2,000 miles down the road. But it all happened just like the prophetic words uh, came forth. Of course, we didn't have any experience in uh, Pentecost, so there was nothing to imitate, not, nobody to learn from. It was just the power of the Holy Spirit. That's, that whole story is written up in a book called Following the Fire, and it's an autobiography of that event uh, that my father has written. I'm telling you this because my father uh, is in heaven, uh, went to be with the Lord at age 93, two years ago this month, two years ago in uh, February. I just want to celebrate this uh, man of God who was faithful, faithful, faithful. And just to know the legacy that you're a part of, you know, when we moved to Florida, God sovereignly introduced us to a businessman named Henry Brunk, who was a contractor. God had spoken to him and said, there'll be a family coming from the north. And when he heard our testimony, he said, I believe you're the family that God told me I'm supposed to help. He got us set up in a, a tent, a gospel tent, tractor trailer truck to haul it in, a travel trailer for our family. And we put a crew together and started traveling all over the United States in tent revivals. That was back when Or Roberts, Billy Graham, T.L. Osborne, William Brenham, A.A. A. Allen, you know, all these. I mean, we'd pass some of them coming into town and they're coming out. Back in the tent revival days, the Dursteins, 
were traveling all over the United States too. Before I was out of elementary school, I'd been to every state in the United States except two. And uh, I value that, that legacy that my parents um, established this place on. You're a part of that now, tonight. And many visions, thank you, many visions have been born in this place. And so that's another miracle that you can receive tonight. But I want you to give tonight and uh, use the envelope so we can make a record of your giving and receipt you properly. And uh, those folks, you can do this online too. And like I mentioned um, at the end of the ministry, I want you to receive from the ministry, then sow into that ministry. And we're going to have a special love offering to our dear brother, Billy Burke's ministry. Will you take an envelope in your hand and um, let's just uh, lift it up to the Lord. Father, thank you that you've blessed us to be a part of the most prosperous nation in the world and to whom much is given. Lord, we have the opportunity to do much, Lord, to see your kingdom come and lives touched all over the world from this place. Father, I pray, bless each one, Father, that you brought out this week. Let them take things home that cannot be bought with money, that which you will pour out, Father, by your spirit. And, Lord, bless every family, every ministry, every business, everyone, Lord, that you've brought together for these, these few days of meetings. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me just make a few announcements as we're receiving this offering. Then I want to get um, Brother Billy Burke on. I want to give you as much time as possible. That's why we've shortened the preliminaries a little bit here. But just to let you know that every uh, teaching that's done here at the Christian Retreat is recorded, and some people still want it on CD or DVD, <laughs> and it's available in our resource center. And uh, especially this week, if uh, you receive a prophecy or uh, ministry and you'd like a copy of that, uh, it's often available right after the service. But if not, before you leave, you can uh, pick it up at the end of this conference back in the resource center. Of course, out the west lobby, if you came in the east lobby, go out the west lobby. Uh, Billy Burke has a table out there, and there's also food out there in our o Oasis Cafe. If you'd like to eat or fellowship, there's just a, a nice place out there to spend some time uh, reflecting on what God has done. Amen? So we're expecting uh, awesome things this week. Uh, as I've said, I've been uh, partnering with uh, Billy Burke Ministries for many, many years. And uh, we're older than we look, but we've been doing this a long time, right, Billy Burke? <laughs> He's an evangelist, pastor. God healed him of a terminal uh, brain cancer tumor. You can imagine that as a boy under the ministry of Catherine Kuhlman. You can read about it in his testimony. Maybe he'll comment on it tonight. But little did he know that God was going to use that to launch him into a healing ministry. And like I said, I value uh, this ministry so much because it's, uh, it's a humble ministry that's designed not only to help you connect uh, to God to receive your breakthrough or your healing, but also to teach you. I believe Billy Burke's got a great way of just teaching the word. And I believe uh, when God heals you, uh, he empowers you to also be a healer. You can touch somebody else. You've got faith to believe. Help me welcome back Christian Retreat and the Family Church Holy Evangelist Spirit, Billy Burke.
every hand up, say, Holy Spirit, I came here to see you, to get engaged with you. I really need you. You're the extension of God himself, that third person. We were handed over to you when Jesus left. He said, I give you another, and he gave us to you. And Jesus told us, you would help us. You would guide us. You would be our great connector to every door, every avenue, every opportunity that you would have for us. We come yielded tonight to your will and your way in the name of Jesus. Come on, give God a mighty shout tonight. So I want you to take both of your hands. Thank you for that volume. Thank you. Take your hands and just move them around the people that are sitting next to you. And just tell them to stay out of your space. <laughs> just say, stay out of my space. Come on, say, anything in this space belongs to me. Come on. Hurry up, quickly, quickly. You may be seated all over the place tonight. So great to have you here at the Christian Retreat in Bradenton. How many came out of town to be here tonight? You came out of town. Oh, my. Oh, my. Just stand up. Stand up if you came out of town to be here. Wonderful. Wonderful. Come here. These, these are two people here, Norman and Sharon, was Melanie and my photographers at our wedding in London, England. 32 years ago. We, 33. 33. We didn't even know each other. It was just one of those, we went over there to elope, and we ended up having a wedding of about, what, 500 people. But uh, Norman and Sharon have been dear, dear friends ever since then, and you made the journey over here. You was here a year four ago. Four years ago. Four years ago. In this church, you, right? I was healed. You were healed. In four years ago. Okay. February. And what were you healed of? Bipolar from... About 16 years and several years of Parkinson's. So you had Parkinson's how long? About two to three years. And you yes. were healed of that? Yes, totally. as well. Totally healed. And that was, oh, your muscles are real rigid. You No, I, I was mild Parkinson's, but when I went to sessions with where other people with Parkinson's were, and I looked at them and I thought, dear God, is this how I'm going to end up? And ah, we've got desperate. Because you saw other people with the same yes. disease. And I got desperate. And mm. Sharon saw you in a YouTube video of a miracle. And she said, that's where we've got to go. We've got to go and see Billy. And you got a ticket and you flew over the ocean. Yes. And you came in. Uh, pardon? 5,000 miles. 5,000 miles. And so you were healed of the Parkinson's and bipolar. And bipolar, yes. Now tell me about the bipolar. I'd, that's I'd been ill for about 16 years, probably at least. And it was nearly destroyed our marriage. It was an absolute miracle of God that Sharon didn't throw me out or leave me. <laughs> Honestly. It's a horrible illness. Yeah. It's a destroyer of people and of marriages. And she was so gracious, and God was so and good. And you were sitting right on the front row right where you are tonight? Right row here, yes. And, and it just night. happened. It just happened. The, the end night. of the first night, yes. End of the first night. Could yeah. you hardly believe it? No. no. Not a drug since. Not a drug since. Not a drug at all. A completely new man. You, you know, I really believe that we take this portion of any service so for granted. We don't pay attention, really. If we listen to these stories, whether it's here, there, or anywhere, I mean, 
this is the testimony of the faithfulness of God. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word. So you know and the anointing is all over this. And if we would just listen to some of these stories, I mean, you can get a deposit of faith to, to just get your healing tonight. But you may have to release it, you know. I mean, here he is looking at other people, connecting, is that how I'm going to end up? Sometimes we assume the worst. And especially as you get older, you think, well, at least I'm not, you know, below the grass. I'm still above the grass. <laughs> you know, and we really have to get that thinking corrected. Come on, see, I'm a candidate <laughs> for a supernatural <laughs> intervention of God. <laughs> right here, right now. So it happened to you guys sitting right here. Yeah. And when I was cut off off the floor, I was sitting there. You was on the floor. Of course. <laughs> and you came and sat next to me. And you can see it on the YouTube video I have of that healing meeting. And you said to me, if you continue. And those words have resonated in my life ever since. And our, our life has been totally transformed spiritually and physically. We've never been so close to God in our life and in our marriage. Come on, come on. Wow. But what they did, they, they came with purpose. When the woman touched the hem, a lot of people had touched the hem. They were called throngers. If you read your Bible... And there were many thronging him. But they were just thronging him to say, I touched him. I, I met the miracle worker. I, I touched his clothes. But they had no real purpose for their own lives to be, to be healed. And they were desperate enough. You know, G, this, this woman, I mean, she was so desperate. She had purpose. And sometimes we play the role of spectator. Sometimes we play the role of spectator too long. And we sit for years or months. You know, before we, be, we begin to think, is this real? Could it happen to me? You know, maybe, you know, why hasn't God done it? Well, maybe you haven't gotten in the position yet for him to do it. He needs you to believe. He don't want guessers up here. Well, I guess I'll give it a shot. Well, he didn't give Calvary a shot. He went there. Come on, say, he went there. Okay, Father, I'll drink the cup. I'll give this a shot and see if this works. No, with purpose he drank the cup. With purpose he carried that down the Via Della Rosa. With purpose he went on that hill. With purpose he suffered immensely. And he rose again. So, you know, tonight I just want you to really, you know, however long you've had whatever you're facing, and if it's something on the inside. You know, we, we saw during the pandemic so many Christians were just paralyzed with fear. Even if they took the vaccine, you would think if you take the vaccine, at least the fear would go. But the vaccine didn't cure the fear. See, nothing cures the fear but what? But the power of God, the love of Jesus. Come on, somebody give God a big shout here tonight. So, so in, in the midst of tonight and tomorrow morning, and, and we have another meeting tomorrow night, I really want you to just target something that you may have accepted unknowingly. You can adjust to anything we have. We are, we are people that acclimate to so many things. Climate and clothes and our money level, our retirement money. We, we just acclimate. We're survivors. But God wants you to be an overcomer. You know, he wants you to think a little bit different with what years I have left. Say, with what years I have left, I want to remember everybody. Well, almost everybody. <laughs> I, had, I had a lady that that I had a man that was deaf, completely deaf. And when his ears came open, he could hear everybody except his wife. <laughs> it's the truth. I come hardly believe, I've never seen it like that. So I would, I would do this, I would talk, he would say that, have somebody come up, I'd say, well, the main person's your wife. And he, she go up, she spoke, and he said, I didn't hear that. I think there's something bigger here than your ears. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so it, this is as much as you want it to be. You know, God doesn't hogtie you and drag you down here. This is something that he wants you to desire. Whatsoever things. Come on, say whatsoever things. I desire. If you have a Bible here, Phil, right here's the Bible. Everything in this book isn't predicated on good looks. Come on, say thank God. Come on. 
or how much money you have or how famous you are. It's predicated on desire and hunger. If you're hungry enough at any age, at any age, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, but I have Alzheimer's. All things are possible. With God, if you believe, if thou canst believe, all things. And sometimes we know we, we hear that, but we just don't get it on the inside of us, and it steals one of our partners. You know, we see them suffer, and we wonder where, where was God. And, you know, there's a lot of questions we don't have the answers for. We don't have those answers. Our answers are that as long as we're here, we don't quit. Amen. Come on, say, as long as I don't quit, I can't lose. But don't confuse quitting with going to church. You can still go to church. You can, you can not quit church, but quit what? Pressing in with your faith. You can go to church, but give in to the disease. You know, so you're, you're a candidate tonight for your ears, your eyes, your heart. You know, your, your paralysis. You know, why not? Why not now? Why not you? This was bipolar and Parkinson's. Those were two... You had a double whammy. I did. It was wonderful. And you had your husband back. Yes, she did. Is it just a new man? And I've got a new husband. Oh, Lord Jesus. In that accent, too, I'll tell you what. That... <laughs> when we were eating for the first time over there, that was back in, what, 90? 1991. 1991. And we were eating a meal, and, and one it was either Norman or Sharon, they took a bite of their food, and they said, oh, lovely. And I thought, lovely? What's lovely about food? I mean, it's, it's either really good or yum, yum, but lovely. Well, I hung around them for, you know, for a few months over there, and pretty soon I was calling things lovely, and this, this the sunset, lovely sunset, and God's lovely. Yes. Give him a chance tonight. Yes. Reach out and step up. Reach your faith out for whatever it is that you need, or maybe, maybe something that you reached four years ago and it hasn't manifested yet and this is your night this is your night to receive thank you both and thanks for being here again tonight are you with us all three meetings all three meetings give Norman and Sharon a big God bless you come on come on get up big God bless you oh I said a big one Anybody else? Where, who else is here outside the outside of Florida? You said some good people. Yes, where are you guys from? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Tell me about it. We came down here to see you because we came to a healing service um, two years ago, and my husband David he had hurt his uh, shoulder just before he had gotten down here. He got the X-ray, so we came down for a healing service. He ended up on the floor. On the floor. Yes. Yes. People like the floor down here. Yeah. This might be why they got this nice soft carpet here. I don't know. Yeah, so he had the x-rays before we came down here. He had prayer. He ended up on the floor, and he got up and said, my shoulder's different. He knew he was going to get healed before he even got up here on the floor because he wow. said he just felt the Holy Spirit all over him. And then when we went home, we were all excited, and he went to the doctor just to confirm. We got the x-ray again, the doctor's office. He got to witness to them and told them all about this healing service that we went to down here with you and how the Lord ministered and healed him. And now it's been part of his testimony for the last two years. So he tells everybody. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you live in Pittsburgh. No, we live in Philadelphia area. You live in Philadelphia. Yeah. And you prayed over us and talked about the um, favor and anointing that we had because we were newlyweds. And we're older and we're newlyweds. And, you know, I just, I, I waited for a long time and abstinence, yeah. just waiting for the right man. And oh. now I was a lot older, so 50, so, and thought that was it. We, this summer, we adopted 11 year old little girl, which. Oh, happened. she's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I had no idea, but God did. God always knows the plan. So all we have to do is submit. And like you said, Keep pressing and believing. That's All things wonderful. Are possible. So you guys came here for the whole three days? Yep. We need some healings, and we're here for... She some needed some healings, plural. Yes. Come on. Yeah. They have a wheelbarrow right out front here in the lobby. Yeah. She yeah. With me. Yes. Oh, Monica. With the Monica She's a so survivor of child trafficking, and so yeah. she oh, fights on the front lines. And 
So she's working with you? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yep. You hooked up. So she came here for me and then you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So just kidding. Pastor. It's great. To, that's good yeah. to see you both. Yeah. You've got a tender heart, sir. I love the heart I feel in you. Yeah, beautiful. Let's give God a big praise for them, I'll tell you. Who, who, uh, good to see you. Who else over here? Out of state. Out of state. Yeah, out of state. And where are you from? Atlanta, Georgia. Uh-huh. And you're excited to be here. I, I, I couldn't wait. Come here. I want to touch the hem of his garment. Come here. A battery. I want to hook my battery cable up to your battery cable. Ah. Because <laughs> yours is stronger than yours. <laughs> Isn't that? She's just right out there in the open, I'll tell you that. No mystery what this lady wants. Put your hands up. He that gives the portion to each of us, only one person can do that. It's good to get in the shadow of great people or people that you have faith in that God's using, but understand only he severs as he wills. As he, if you surrender, then you'll get that portion that he has, and I'll tell you, you'll get all of it. You never have to beg. Come on, you never have to borrow. Come on, never beg, never borrow. Just get the portion that he has for you. Oh, come on, somebody give God a shout. Wow. Come on, give him a mighty shout. Remember Peter and John, when they were going to the temple, remember, they hadn't even prayed yet. But they said, such as I have. Not such as you have, and not such as, you know, James and John. Such as I have, Peter and John. So they had a portion. They knew what they had. They, they didn't want to exceed that measure but they don't want to live underneath that measure. Come on, say, such as I have, such as I, have. I, give I give to you. Find out where that portion is for you. Don't let anybody restrict that. You may find out it's more than you thought. You may find out it's less than you thought. But you want to maximize whatever portion he did give you. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. That's wonderful right there. Out of state? Yes, ma'am, quickly, out of state. Tell me where you're from. North Carolina. North Carolina. Well, stand up. I'm going to see who you are. <laughs> what brings you the whole way here? Well, um, 30 years ago in New Jersey, uh, you prayed for me. and um, 30 years ago? 30 years ago. She must have the wrong person 30 <laughs> years ago. She, she, has, she has to have the wrong person. 30 years ago. And where, where at in New Jersey? Uh, what well, was South Jersey? South Jersey. Yeah, uh, I was friends with um, Brenda Cutney oh, and, and Judy Gerber oh, and Dan and Helen de Bonaventure. Oh my! And that's how I ended up at your meetings. Those are wonderful people. And I was uh, having a great emotional pain. You prayed for me. I was totally delivered. Delivered. And um, and that I have a new hu a husband. A new We've been husband. Married for ten years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ten years. <laughs> yeah, and. Um, but, uh, You've had to fill in the blanks with him, probably, right? <laughs> you had to fill in the blanks as far as your life. and. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I was 20 years single, but the Lord good, put good. us together. Yeah. Good, man. Good. And, um, but uh, the last year and a half, I was uh, diagnosed with um, inflammatory arthritis. Where's and, it at? Well, right now, it's in my eye. The arthritis in the eye? In the eye. How's and, that? But I've had it in my body. What's that? I've had it in my body. But arthritis in the eye. I've, I've quite it gets infl it's inflammatory arthritis. It gets inflamed. And Is it inflamed right now? It's better. I've been taking some drops, but it's it, Let me give you painful. a drop. Come here. Let me give you a drop. <laughs> he touched me. Can we just sing, he touched me? He, he touched me. me. Come on, everybody. Oh, oh he touched me. Something happened. Something happened. Now I know. Now he touched me and made me whole. As I'm praying for whoever here, you anyone can receive. He's in this whole room. 
So the moment through the course of tonight or tomorrow morning you sense anything changing, I want you to just wave me down or get one of the ushers. Where's our ushers at? Okay, there aren't any ushers. Okay, so right here where? Here, what are you doing back there? That's called hidden ushers. Embedded, embedded ushers. But I want to know. I want to, don't, because that, your faith that ebbs and flows, you could get healed and lose it in the same service. We just want to help seal the deal. Amen. Many of you is going to begin to see better and hear better. Amen. Many of you have taken blood pressure medicine for the last time. Amen. See, that's why you're here. You're not here just to watch. You're here to believe. Amen. Come on, say you got to believe. believe. It's not a magic show. It's, magic show. it's a night of miracles. But it's my faith that makes it happen. God is setting the table right now. He's letting you hear it and see it and sniff it and smell it. And he's saying, hey, come, there's enough for everybody. But you may have to make a moment. You may have to sleep on it tonight. But, boy, we only have three meetings to go. And why not get it the earlier the better? One hour out of pain. I'm, I'm all for anything gets me away from needles, away from pain. And I like getting help and keep my clothes on. Come on, can you say amen? So it's really great that here you get to keep your clothes on. Nobody sees you any other way than here. And you get healed. That's so amazing. And how many years ago was that? 30. At least. Don't say that. Just say 30. About 30. Brenda and... Uh, I love Brenda. She, she's I in heaven her. now. Helen is in heaven. Well, those are those are true. Tr those are wonderful people. Yeah. Might power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that mighty power. Of, oh Jesus! Wow! Come on, give God a big shout! Come on! Oh my! Don't don't if if you get touched and you're still conscious, you may get one of those touches tonight where you're just out. But if you're conscious on the floor, don't just lay there. That's your time to say, oh, do it all, Jesus. Dialogue with him. Don't wait to come up. Don't fall to get up. Fall to be in position. To say, I need you. I need you. I want all of it. I'll take half tonight and half tomorrow morning, but I want it all. See, this lady here is getting a whole deliverance right here. This, she's getting so set free. She's fighting people all around her that don't think she can do what she wants to do. Some of your enemies are right in the church. Jesus said, I was wounded in the house of my friends. It's the, it's the hardest betrayal there is, is to be betrayed right in among your own household of faith. But it happens. It doesn't make anybody really worse than anybody else. It means we're all growing. We're all in the journey. Even that person sitting next to you needs so much help. Look at them. Look at them. Come on. Say amen to that. Come on. But this lady here, she's going home different. Who she belong to? Who she come with, this lady? Is she by herself? I guess she's by herself. Oh, she was sitting right here next to you? You know her? You'll feel the ripples when she sits down there. You'll feel the glory down this whole, down this whole row here. But everybody said what well, never happened. God brought her here tonight to say it's about to happen. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, give him a shout. Who else? Out, over, out of, you're, you're out of the country, out of state? St. Louis? Come on. Come on, you got to come. Come, come, come quickly, St. Louis. Hi, hi. No, down, uh, Neal, St. Louis. <laughs> North Carolina was faster than that. Come on. Glad to have you tonight. Glad. To, how are you doing tonight? Okay. What brings you here? Well, who, uh, we know God does miracles. My husband was healed of uh, lupus. He almost died about eight years ago. And they can mark it on the genetic marker now. And it, after we prayed for him, he got a miracle healing. It's Beautiful. incurable. Beautiful. And, yeah, I pray now for my back and my spine. And my okay. Shoulder. Yeah. But he, he was healed of lupus. Yes. That's a, that's a terminal disease. Yes. God healed me. And he healed. And it's painful. Yes. Very painful disease. Yes. I was 
woke up one morning <laughs> and I said, I've got peripheral neuropathy in my feet. I feel like a truck hit me in Lucas in the morning, but I got a torn rotator cuff in my shoulder. I can fix that. So I made an appointment with my doctor. I had to stop all isn't that Isn't that crazy how we think? We, we think not so bad. Doctor can do that. Not so bad. Not so bad. You can't wait till something really is too late moving in your life and then you try and jump in. You're not using your faith. Use your faith on the littlest thing that you have. Take nothing for granted. Jesus, I, I surrender this cold to you. By your, your stripes, I'm healed of this flu. Practice faith. Come on, say practice faith, practice faith. On, every single thing. on every single thing. Then if something ever should attack you that's big, then your faith is already in motion. Amen. Daniel didn't start praying in the lion's den. He, he prayed three times a day before he hit the den. Come on, say, he had a holy habit before he got in the den. And it came naturally. You think, boy, if I was in the lion's den, oh, you'd be chattering. You might even pray in tongues. But listen, get, get the habit now, the reading that word, the worship. Get the habit now, then when something gets hit, you're not going to be given into fear and doubt and unbelief. That's a great story right there. So, so much got the congregation praying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I woke up after the shoulder, shoulder surgery. I had no more pain anywhere in my body. Lucas was That's a pain. great story. Yeah, that's, that's true. But she needs healing now. I heard you. I heard you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank heard. God. For you want to get her healed, then, Absolutely. then you're both healed. <laughs> so where do you hurt the most, ma'am? Uh, so it would be my spine and four herniated discs in my neck. Four herniated discs in the, Is it hurting now? Uh, a little bit. They well, check it. Just check it. That's what they did. Here's what God does. Put those hands up. Touch your master tonight. Oh, take away the memories of those needles. Let your presence go through her like fire tonight. Just like that holy fire. Yeah, oh, wow. Good, oh, they're holy. Oh, no, no, husband. Get him again, Lord. Get him again. Ooh. Oh, I need you, Lord. I need, I need you, Lord. Lord. Come on, everybody. I need you, Lord. I, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right, right now. I lift my head, bow my knee, and worship at your throne. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right. Come on, one more time. I need you, Lord. Everybody, I need you. I, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. Oh, I do. I do. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right, right now. Holy Ghost, we need him. I, I lift, lift my hands, bow my knee, worship at Out of state, who else? Out of state, quickly, somebody. Just a few more will do this. A few more. Who? What's going on with you, man? What's going on with you? Come on. Come on. Us three are from New Hampshire. And I'm are, sorry? Us three. Uh, this is my wife, my friend Bill, all from New Hampshire. And, and you're here, you're fighting cancer. No, uh, from, from New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your head. I'm going to pray for myself right now. <laughs> okay, so what, what do we, all of you come here for the meeting. So what is it that you? I just came down to hang ah. out with these two because we're, we're crazy musicians. We love Jesus. And they, ah. these, this guy, this one of your people, are doing music on the beach. So, well, that's what I thought. And they told us about you as well. And I said, well, I'm coming down and I'd like to go to one of those meetings. So <laughs> we're having fun. <laughs> but yeah, um, we had seen you, uh, especially my wife, uh, about 
four or five years ago in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, that was the start of her neck healing. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, in 2016, I injured my neck. Um, I blew out a disc between C6 and C7. Oh, boy. Um, when I went sledding with my daughter mm -hmm. in uh, Snow in New Hampshire. Um, in 2018, I think it was in the spring, I flew to Pittsburgh to see you, and um, you prayed for me, and I felt the touch from God, and I was running all around the auditorium. Oh, wow. And um, I was claiming I was healed, and... I was feeling really good, but when I got home, the symptoms started to come back, mm -hmm. and I decided that I was going to go have surgery because um, I was in considerable pain. Mm -hmm. And when I was laying on, I had a scheduled surgery, mm -hmm. and when I was laying in the bed waiting my turn, I had like the gown on mm -hmm. and the IV in my arm. And like you said, you know, you want to keep your clothes on. I know, I remember that joke from when I was there in 2018. I, I was really mad that because joke, they said... joke, it's not a joke, it's the <laughs> truth. I was really mad because they said I had to take all my clothes off. I'm like, really? You're just working on the neck, you know? But anyways, um, so I prayed this prayer. I'm like, Lord, if I have gone before you and I shouldn't have the surgery, please cancel it. I said, if not, please protect me. And 45 minutes later, the surgeon himself came in. He said, I'm sorry, I have to cancel your surgery today. I'm overbooked. <laughs> you better put your hands together right now. So I skipped out of the hospital. And That's um, I was a little nervous because he's like, I can get you in tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but I never went back. Um, the healing wasn't instantaneous. Right. Um, you were a miracle in motion. It was. It was. I stayed in the word. But, yeah. He healed me. See, listen to me. There's a big difference between a healing touch and healed. See, she had a healing touch that she ended up doing the right thing. If you do the right thing after the touch, it'll take you the whole way to Hawaii. Come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> it'll take you the whole way to healed. A lot of people would get the touch and think, oh, boy, I got healed. You got the touch. See, it's what you do with the part that you get. All praise. Whatever. If you get a prophetic word, it's what you do with it. Glory. It don't have to be years down the road. But if you sit on that egg, it'll hatch. <laughs> it's what you do with it. Too many people leave here and want no responsibility. Sign up tonight. Say, God, I'll be over-responsible. I'll be more, I'll do my due diligence. I, I will be your guy. I'll be your girl. I want this thing sooner than, than later. So the healing touch and heal. And there, there's been a despairing difference in, in that all these years. And people think, well, I got healed, but I lost it. I got healed, but it didn't stick. It would have stuck. You didn't put a value on that. Even the lepers who didn't even know him worshipped him. You're getting a healing from somebody that nobody else can help you, and he's not even asking you for anything but what? But worship, honor, a testimony. If you'll make a covenant tonight and heal me, I'll tell everybody. Make that covenant. It'll speed up everything that God has for you. He wants to be worshipped. He died for our sins, but he suffered for the healing. He suffered immensely for that healing. That cat of nine tails ripped open his back. It was like raw hamburger. It was for every disease known then and every disease known until the end of time. There's nothing that the blood can't cover, and there's no yoke the anointing can't break. Come on, somebody give God a shout tonight. And, and if it takes one touch of God to break it, great. If it takes a hundred touches. The, 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 get committed. Stay in faith. Continue to believe. Some of the greatest miracles we've seen has been one lady, 11 visits in Toronto. She had throat cancer that ate away her voice box. This is all on film, all documented. She came 11 times to the Toronto meetings. And on the 11th time, the power of God came in and not only healed her, but gave her a brand new voice box. Come on. That's amazing. It's amazing. 
But you got to push the naysayers out of your path. Don't hate them. Don't curse them. And they probably still go to your church. They probably just babysit your children, whatever. But you got to overlook people. You got to forbear people. That word forbear means you got to suffer with people. They don't get it sometimes. They're not where you are. They don't have the same hunger you do to be healed. They go to church to meet people. You go to church to meet God. Come on, somebody give God a shout here. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody loves them, but not everybody needs them. And when you get to that point where you need them just to get through your every day, that deposit of grace, it just tightens that relationship. So come here, both of you come here. This is your husband and wife, right? Husband and wife? Yeah. This happened how many years ago? And how are you doing? You're doing okay? Um, I, I could use the healing in my eyes. What's going on with your eyes? Um, they, they call it retinitis pigmentosa and uh, yeah. ast astigmatism. And this cataracts. is a great story, though. I love this story that that you you know you went to the hospital anyhow. That after it came back, the symptoms came back, yeah. and then you were laying on the gurney, right? Yeah, I was waiting in the area where. And you surgery. and you said let, let it be canceled if it's supposed to be, and it was. Yeah, I said, Lord, if that I've had gone to before shock you, you. I, I was, I was startled. I skipped out. I still had the like bands around my arm and. Oh. And they kept calling me. They're like, "Are you coming back tomorrow?" And I'm like, "I'll get you back to You have to get this story in print. You got to <laughs> yeah, get this in print. A little track or it's something. It's on my Facebook page. It's on your Facebook page. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody click onto that? Are you getting not any? too many? You know. <laughs> no. well, maybe we can change that for you. Put your hands up. There's a touch of God on both of you, and your heart's going to be enlarged tonight. He's going to enlarge your heart. There's something that you're craving, but you don't know what it is. Is it moving? Is it a car? Is it a vacation? No, it's opening and expanding your sphere of influence. And that's what the master's going to do. This night will be, you'll never forget this night. You're going to feel your heart inside of you actually changing, actually growing. Oh, the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh. Come on, somebody, you've got to shout. My God. He touched me. Come on, I want you to sing it all. He and all the joy. That something happened. Something. Whoever knows, does anybody know these people right here? This couple, you, you, right here, you all, you all know them. Right here, Pastor. Watch what happens to them. It's going to be incredible. Do they? Are they musicians too? Very good ones. What Excellent. Are they, what yeah. do they play? Uh, Jen, I heard her singing today, and I enjoyed that. And uh, Bob, <laughs> he's just a fine guitar player, and we both record. I work with him. And, but he's, he's a really excellent guitar player. I mean, really. Was he play acoustic or lead guitar? Both. What? Both of them. Uh -huh. A yeah. little bit of harmonica, that kind of thing. A little bit of harmonica. Yeah. yeah. He's on the beach with uh, Janine. Yeah. Is that your name? Right. I'm new to that. <laughs> he's on the, what? He's with you? On the beach, you lead worship on the beach. Which beach do you go to? Oh, Anna Marie Island. There's no place quite like that. I like that place. Yeah, that's it. And do you see people come and ask you what you're doing? Or? Yeah, we've been there for a couple of years now. We go out there and preach the gospel. We lay hands on the sick. And Wonderful. Every Saturday. Where do you, do you go over by where? the, the What's that called? The cafe? Uh, the, yeah, go? the beach cafe. You go to the beach cafe? Mm -hmm. And then he was sent there a couple, actually last year, because he's a powerful testimony. And then he messaged me saying, hey, do you need someone to play guitar? And I s said, sure. And so yeah. he's been helping us lead worship out there. So He's touching you. Come here. He's touching you quickly. This is an energy thing. This is an energy thing. This, this depletion of energy is going to leave you tonight. Put your hands up. This depletion of this, this, uh, this chronic fatigue, 
and it has hit you. And you get out of energy pretty quick. But God's going to expand this energy beyond your years. It's going to be the strength. You're just going to be able to go and go and go and go and never burn out. It's going to be quite interesting to watch this happen in you. A fire that never, ever goes out. We give God praise for that. We give all oh, that power of the Holy Ghost. Wow. Come on, give God a big shout. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Come on down. You might as well come, sir, with the hat. I mean, you, 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 what, what do you play? What, what, what do you play? You play guitar, acoustic? What? Uh, I play this kind of the same way he does. A 12 string, 6 string? 6. Acoustic and uh, I like the clean electric. So who's impacted play. you the most with your guitar? Who's influenced you the most? I know that sounds strange, but Jesus. Okay. But I, we come from the rock culture and, and uh, that, of course. But we write songs, we rewrite them, and uh, we love to do that. We get inspired. Uh, sometimes the Holy Spirit, in my case, I know Bob goes through it, um, wakes us up, and I, I don't. I don't waste no time. I go right to no problem. There's a breast cancer being healed. Somebody being healed of breast cancer in the room tonight. Where are you? Quickly, breast cancer. Come to me. Breast cancer. Breast cancer. Breast cancer. No more. 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 <laughs> it knocked the usher over, too. Oh, that, that's Dan. Breast cancer. Hurry. I'd be running down here if that was me. Breast cancer, no more, no more breast cancer. Wow. Wow. Wait, breast cancer. Somebody catch these ladies just a part of the whole thing. I come from New Zealand. I you, have a you what? Testimony. Oh, your testimony. Tell I me. Have, I come from New Zealand. You come from New Zealand. Yeah, I come from New Zealand. Oh, no, when I said you have to She has a testimony. She has to give. Well, tell me. Tell me. Talk English. Don't, don't tell secrets. Talk to me. I want to know what you're saying. She's been diagnosed with terminal. Breast Terminal breast cancer. For three years, four years. Uh -huh. uh, this is the second time. It was a remission that came back and okay. it spread to bones, to the liver, uh -huh. um, and to her lungs. She watches your service online. Uh -huh. Sometimes she wouldn't even understand what you're saying because her English is not very good. Okay. But it really, it really, she receives. She watches your service because at times she's afraid. But she holds on to the Lord and your service. She receives a lot of faith. Receives healing. And she would tell God that, that you heal me as well. So he, she doesn't understand the other diseases that you heal. She receives that every time you have breast cancer. And she receives saying that I have been healed. They don't even need me. They're having fun themselves. Come on. They're, they're having church all by themselves. Um, last year, uh, last For year, November. I believe in God. Come on, let's sing it. I believe. Come on. I believe in miracles. In miracles. I've seen. I've seen that. So Miraculous. Miraculous. Ah. Changing one. Redeem. Redeem through Calvary. It's the power, lady. It's the power. I've, I've seen, seen the lily push its way. Ah, through that sovereign song. Come on, I believe. I believe. Your church, but I, I suddenly well, I saw the church, temper, me me. temper, I the, the ministry, and yes. phone number. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I told my daughter must be find the Billy Bird. <laughs> For oh, I, I got. You said I brought my husband and my wife. Also, my husband. And my mom. They all need healing. 
we've come a long way and she's been yeah. looking forward to be here. Can you please heal my husband and my in-law as well? Tell her if she gives me a moment, we're going to get her healed. Tell her to give me just a moment. Here. <laughs> That's the power. She's receiving. Tell her she's receiving. It's receiving. The healing is going all through you. It's going all through you. you it, it, I don't know what that says, but it's all through you. All through you. The doctor says that she needs to continue her medication, but she feels like God is telling her she doesn't need to. She's got to get single-minded right here. Single-minded right here. Focus. We got to get focused. It can't be him and them and those and maybe. It's got to be, I got to get to that him. When I touch that him, it's game over. When I touch that him, it's game over. Come on, somebody give me. Come on, give him a mighty shout. You have great expectation in a lot of other places that you go. When I get to that restaurant, I can't wait to get Yoder's apple pie. I can't wait. I can taste it now, and you're not even there yet. Oh, when I get to the beach, here's, I got a spot there. It's the same thing. Before you get here, you, you just cultivate. You know, you prepare. When I hear that song, you know, whenever I, whenever I hear that first testimony... And give God something that he can confirm with you. Your case isn't too difficult. I don't have enough time to talk about all the cases. I'll try and intersperse them through the next few days. But this is just an amazing hour, and it's about to get even greater. Yes. About to get even greater. What's, what's happening here, man? What's happening here? Fourth stage lung cancer. I hate that for you. Okay. Yes, I hate it. So what do you, how, I had no symptoms except I couldn't swallow. Okay. And it ended up a mass on the side of my esophagus. Okay. How long have you had that? And since October. Okay. Right. Well, actually, I had it started. Well, ma'am, is there any pain there? And none anymore. I can swallow again. Okay. I had five chemos. Okay. So far. And I'll tell you, I'm a mess because I, I'm hard of hearing and I have this stage four cancer. It's You're fighting stage four. You don't have it. You have Jesus. I have, I, amen. You're fighting I, cancer. I, I have, I when have you say five. I have, you're taking ownership. I have five. It's so well. Come on, I have Jesus. Say that I have Jesus. I have, Jesus. I have the anointing. I have, the I have the promises of God. I have, the of God. I have a healing covenant. Have a healing covenant. I'm fighting something. But I have the Holy Ghost. Get that, get that terminology. You say, does that really matter? Yeah. Yeah, you'll have whatever you say. Just start saying that right and give honor to the cross. Every time you say, I have this and not that, you honor how he suffered. You want everyone to know what you went through. You like letting people know that you went to this and you suffered for that. And that's what we do. We, we gain regard and respect that like that. So whenever you're honoring God, just say, hey, you know, he, I honor you. I, I, I have healing. I have what Calvary gave me. I'm going to touch you, lady. It's going to go all through you. It's going to go all through you. I, I, I believe something's happening in your body tonight, but more so in your thinking. If your thinking doesn't change, your body won't change. Come on, say, the anointing, the anointing. Has, to the has to break the stronghold. There has to be a mental shift that goes along with every prayer and every touch. I got to think different. I came. I saw. I received. Come on, give God a shout. That mighty power of the Holy Ghost. It's all through that lady right now. It's all through her. But see, she has to believe that. See, this lady here, see, she's going through some deliverance. That's good for her. She needs that. that something's had a hold of her. Some, something not right has a hold of her, but she's going to be okay. 
There's nothing bad here. It's all good. It's all good. All I did was ask for people that was out of state and that caused the revival. My God. We haven't even, we haven't even started the meeting yet. Quit, anybody else out of state in this area? Right here? Right where? Right here? Who? Back here in the back? Way in the back? Come on, lady. Come on, blonde. With the blonde there. Bring the blonde girl up here. Bring, is that your husband, your boyfriend? Who is it? Your who? Your husband? Bring him up. Is that your son? Come on over here. What's going on here with you guys? Two weeks ago. Yes. Um, he was supposed to go into the hospital for a bowel what, 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 Is this what? what your what, prayer what? at your Bible study. Yes, this was a Bible study, but he was... He had a bowel blockage that would have been fatal if he would have went into the hospital, but we didn't go. We came here, and he was completely healed of the bowel blockage. I don't know what's wrong with half of this crowd. Somebody better give God praise. My God. Believe me, I, I'm not here to touch anything that, that Jesus does. But I am here to give us a little bit more fire to, to give him all the glory. I mean, that's step number one, how to keep perpetually receiving. He never asks you to be brilliant. He never asks you to write the Bible. He never asks you to do a lot of things. But what he does want is respect. He wants the glory. That's what the battle was in the beginning with Lucifer and God was who gets the glory. God had it. Lucifer wanted it. And he ended up losing his name, his title, his position, his home, and his body too. He lost it all because he wanted the glory. Only God gets the glory. Honor goes to men. Say honor. honor. Some double honor. But glory, no football player. No soccer player. No Oscar winner. They get honor. But the glory. Come on, say that glory. Goes to God. Come on, somebody. Keep, keep that right. Keep, keep that right ratio right in your life. And I mean, you'll continue to be blessed. But I mean, if you get that all messed up and you touch the ark. You can't touch the ark. You carry it. But can't touch it. Can't touch the ark, just can't. So tell me, what, so you were here, was, it, was this a cancer? Yeah, I'm uh, fighting stage four pancreatic cancer. Pa stage four pancreatic, but the bile blockage was removed. Yes. Well, what do you think about that? Wow. Yeah, I think he, I know he touched me. I mean, that, uh, that's like me. hallelujah, he glory. That, blo that blockage. Huh? He healed that blockage from my yeah. body. Yes, absolutely. But that ought to be a big boost to he's going to finish no it. Yes, praise God. <laughs> we believe so. Is that right? You're the sun, right? What do you think about the, the blockage being removed? I think it's just the Holy Spirit all day, just smooth through him. And I know he's, he's got to get healed of this cancer soon. And so what are you saying about this? So he, he's still fighting stage four cancer. He's been in a lot of pain when we left that meeting. And uh -huh. he was really attacked with a lot of pain. And he's still having the pain. He's still going through the cancer treatment. My son has hemophilia. He doesn't have any clotting factor in his blood. Hemophilia. Well, that's pretty rare. I don't see much of that. Mm -hmm. Put your hands up, all three of you. The Holy Spirit asks you to come on all three of these people. All three of this family special here tonight. Just sift through them with your presence. Let it be so strong, so powerful. Let this clotting, let, let the body be able to clot. Let the cancer just disappear. And touch the wife. Oh, let it be here be even before they put their feet in the front door of their habitation tonight, where they live. Let this happen even in this service tonight. We thank you for this completion. We thank you for this mighty... We thank you for this mighty completion. We thank you for this mighty... Com Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Wow. Somebody got to praise him tonight. Come on, somebody got to praise him. Stay in the line of fire. I don't understand people. 
They get a major touch. They go home and, and they, we never see them in the presence again. When you can't maintain it yourself, keep going where they can be maintained for you. Rent until you can own. Well, that's so good right there. <laughs> Don't you write a book on that, Phil. No, I won't put the forward in it. I'll sue you for the book. <laughs> hey, I, I, that's one of the mysteries that really drives me crazy is all these people, they, they get it and they know it and, the, some, and half of it goes away, but they don't come back into the same presence. You're supposed to. If you can do it on your own, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. I'm not looking for more work. I have enough. But whoever, wherever you are, and you get that, that powerful touch, there's something there. Sometimes God chooses to visit a place, not just a person. All through the Bible, he visited places. You know, he, and he, and that's why we, we, att we attach miracles to the wedding at Cana. You know, the well at Bethel. There's always a place. The woman from Samaria. God just didn't touch people. He touched places. He, Azusa Street wasn't just a, a revival. It was a building. It was a place. Pensacola was a place. Toronto was a place. God's about to touch places all over this country. Come on. And he's going to touch some blue states. And they will turn purple. Come on, somebody. <laughs> wow. There's such a presence up here. You feel that presence up here? Yeah. Strong. Very strong. Wow. Wow, wow. This is good. This is, you know, everybody wants a great story, but nobody wants to go through anything. People say, you knew Catherine Coleman. Yeah, I had to get brain cancer to meet her. I'd rather never have brain cancer and not meet her. How about that? Because it wasn't just cancer and going to a meeting. It was all that they did to me behind closed doors. Where nobody was there but me and Holy Ghost and those. That was 1962. Imagine how big the needles were back then. People think they couldn't have been that big. I swear it wasn't was that long. Come on, somebody. <laughs> And they didn't, they didn't give you an anesthetic. They put a big rubber mask over you. They held, it, they held you down and put a rubber mask over you. So it felt like they were killing you. I don't mind going to sleep, but I don't like being put to sleep. Look at your neighbor and say, don't ever put me to sleep. Come on, tell your neighbor. We're going we're gonna to stand in faith for this. This is the great story. So when you're going through something, instead of, hey, listen to me. Instead of when you're, as you're going through something now, instead of get, doing all that complaining, begin to think, boy, I wonder how God's going to use this. Come on, say, I wonder how God's going to use this. <laughs> just shift that. I mean, just give the devil the sucker punch. I wonder how God's going to use this. You know? I'm, I've seen a man 99 years old, wonderfully, miraculously healed. 13 people out in Texas all had flat feet, God arches. And they were all in their 80s and 90s. I thought that they would die if God touched them. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Listen to me. But they grew arches. We were sliding our hands underneath their feet. And those, those people loved me that night, at least for one night. Come on, one night. <laughs> Don't ever think it's too late. Rule number one, say rule number one. It's never too late. What's going on here? A chemo rash? Yeah. How do you know the rash is still there? Well, I could see it right at the second. Maybe it's not internal, but it's there. Her legs won't move, she says. 
You, could, you couldn't move them before and now you can? No. Lady later, that's the anointing. Lay, lay still. Lay My God, don't lay. mess it up. <laughs> We're teaching tomorrow morning anointing 101. Tomorrow morning. Come on, 101. When I was slain, I couldn't move. I was afraid I couldn't move. I was pinned to the floor. That's called a heavy dose. You say, how come I don't get a heavy dose? Because you're so anxious to get up. Yeah. Ask him for a heavier. Ask him for a measure. Ask him for a, the anointing is measured in weights. The glory is measured in weights. The cross was measured in weights. It's important that you let that ask for a greater, you know, a, a greater weight. The weight of the glory. Where you can't get up. That's what I would ask if I was each one of you, if I would say, oh, if I could ever relive that moment. And, and I still get, I get slain when I'm alone. Who catches you? The sofa. <laughs> I'm serious. Or the bed. I still need to catch you. Come on, say amen. But the weight, the weight of what you experience. You don't not grow that. I'm tired of hearing people say you outgrow that. You don't not grow that. What do you think the 24 elders are experiencing right now around the throne? When John saw me, he fell down as though he was dead. Forever's the glory. Forever's that amazing presence. Aren't you looking forward to that? 24-7, 365. How do you feel there, young man? I mean, I feel good. Now, here's my I next question. Good. What do you believe? What do you believe? That's what matters. I believe what you the Father's, feel comes and goes, but what father's do you healing me. I, I, I don't feel the pain. You don't I feel don't, the pain. I don't feel the pain. Come on, somebody. I would start tonight, I would take communion every night. I would, I mean, I would take a lot of communion, a lot of juice, a lot of bread, both of you together, I guess all, if you're, you live with them, I, I would do it and do it. What's that? It goes against your diet? Yes. What, what can't you eat? Bread. You're not supposed to have bread. Is that what the doctor said? Well, yeah. Excuse me. Can you, do you need a cracker or can you do a... No carbs. A rice pad? No carbs at all. We can do keto bread. You can Start do what? Keto bread. That'll, that'll work. Keto bread will work. Yes, that's right. Amazing. How you feeling there? I just felt the flow of the Holy Spirit hit me like that. All through you. All through me. <laughs> How do you feel there, lady? Different. Different. I like yeah. that. Thank you. My God is good. Yeah, walk up the aisle. Go walk. Go walk up just by yourself. By yourself. Go. You're okay. You can do it. No, I know you're shaking, but go. At her. Look at her. She can't stop. She can't stop the vibration that's going on inside of her. You know, when the Beach Boys wrote good vibrations, I don't think they were thinking of this. But this is the best vibration you can ever get, right here. And that may radiate for some time. She may have that for three days. God's with you as long as you welcome him. Nothing to be afraid of. Come on, say nothing to be afraid of. Some people don't like a lot of glory touching them. They like their regular life. They like to visit God. Some people like to carry God. Some people want to be overwhelmed with God. He'll accommodate you as hungry as you are or as thirsty as you are. Jesus screamed and said, anybody thirsty? 
come and drink. And that means perpetually. There's endless supply. Not just for a service. The coming, what's coming in the future for America. Listen to me. There's going to be meetings that won't be able to be quit ended. Do you hear me? There'll be meetings that won't be able to be stopped. Denise Renner wrote that book, Unstoppable. That's what's coming. Come on, say unstoppable. unstoppable. You can turn the lights out, but the glory is going to be there. And if you don't come, other people will. And they may get your portion. They'll get, they're more hungry, so that will get it over you. You want healed just enough to get back to the where you were. God's wanting to take you somewhere you never have been before. Come on, give him a shout here. Wow. Well, what are we going to do? We, we compromised on what kind of bread? Did we comp cracker? What? Well, we, have, we can do keto. Are you okay with this? Yes. Um, but I've also had a lot of kidney pain. I'm assuming it's my kidney, but it wakes me up at night. It's been months and months and months. Why are you assuming it's your kidney? Where it's located. Where? Um, uh huh. Does it, does it radiate? It's sometimes I feel it a little bit on the other side, but it's primarily over here. But I I'm not a doctor. I don't off. practice medicine, but I believe that's your gallbladder. Mm, okay. I believe you might have some stones in there. I not the rolling stones, but the stones. Okay. <laughs> Put your hands up. Your kidneys are fine. I, that's what I believe. I'm not a doctor. You may want to get checked on this. But I'm going to touch you. If that is the stones, they're going to begin to dissolve. Yeah. Don't you hear me? That might be touched. This whole family's got the anointing on us. This whole family. Yeah. Come on, give God a shout. Yeah. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Yeah. Ma'am, come, come. What brings you here, ma'am? I'm from West Virginia. Uh -huh. I just returned from the Philippines yesterday. Uh -huh. I'm here visiting my mom, uh -huh. but I'm standing intercessoring for my husband, Carl, who's in West Virginia and has suffered from back pain. The woman behind me touched me and said, you need to go up there right now. So I'm here being obedient for whatever the Lord has. So is your husband in West Virginia? Yes, he is. And how bad is the pain? 50 years, he got ran over by a car, and he has suffered every day. And the doctor Okay, ma'am, yes. calm down, calm yes. down. So where, is he in bed? Is he on a chair or what? No, he's just on the farm sitting on the couch right now, okay. probably watching Family Feud. Or, yeah. <laughs> I know, and I'm here. Amen. <laughs> he knows I'm here, yes. Mm. <laughs> Every hand up over the whole place. Come on. Amen. We, we, we just want to shoot an arrow clear into West Virginia tonight yes. Yes. to touch this husband, to give him this experience, life-changing some of you tonight that have been touched or some of you that are witnessing this, I don't know how on God's green earth this cannot be a life-changing experience. What you could never stop before, uh, seeing this and being a part of something like, like this. To have a place like the Christian retreat where they still do this. Gerald's up there probably dancing around. He's probably up there... Him and Viola eating, eating pe peanut butter cake that she used to make. That peanut butter cake. Holy Ghost, I thank you for this lady. I thank you for this lady. There's the power coming on you, ma'am. It's Holy Ghost. Loosen this lady. Loosen this lady. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Faith gives you a rest. Lack of faith gives you disturbance. Once you really, once you re really believe what something's taking place, you'll begin to rest that God's busy taking care of that. Then you have to get into the trust factor. Come on, say, I trust him. Maybe something shows up, a symptom, or maybe, you know, you hear a bad report or you see somebody with the same condition on Fox News and they talk about it. And the devil's there. He's always, he's the talking snake forever until he gets put in that pit. He's always talking. 
always downgrading, always condemning, always bringing that fear. And you got to deal with the talking snake. Don't deal with Eve did. She talked with him. Talk to him, not with him. Come on, give God a big, mighty, mighty shout. Pick her up. Thank you. Now, whenever the Holy Spirit tells you, okay, tonight here, I want you to call your husband in West Virginia. Get him on the phone. Ask him how, what is his back or his legs? Just ask him. Yeah, just don't do it because I told you to do it. Right. I want you to hear the Holy Spirit. Yes, okay? amen. Yes. And then let us all know. Yes, I Give her a big amen. God bless you. Come on. Come on, give God a big, big shout. Wow. She okay? She's all right? Is this your wife or who? I'm sorry? Okay. I didn't know who it was was touching her like that. I didn't know. I mean, I wanted to make sure it was right, right? I wanted to make sure about that. And Jesus, I adore Jesus. Jesus, I adore. Come on, put those hands up. Come on, Jesus, I adore. And come breathe upon me. To your name. To your name most high. I'm yielded to your spirit. Yielded to your spirit. I'm walking in your love. I'm walking in your love. Here's the best part right here. Jesus. Jesus I adore. Come on, Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore your holy name. Wow. 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 We just kind of went into this, didn't we? You just get caught up in that he just takes you. It's marvelous, isn't it? Marvelous. Marvelous. He's a healing Jesus. He's a delivering Jesus. He's a prospering Jesus. Don't, don't, don't cut yourself out of this. I wasn't raised like this. It's never too late to learn. Never too late to come into his presence. Thomas fought it. Took Jesus three years. Three years to convince this slow, adapting person called Thomas. He was not a jump in right away kind of person. He really was more slow motion. But there was a group of believers that tolerated him, loved him, kept bringing him to the services. And it caught. This time the wet wood gets burning. Come on, the wet wood. Come on, say the wet wood is about to get burning. It really, really is. I believe that. Is she okay, this lady? She tried to get up and she couldn't get up. She got a heavy touch. She's trying to get up here the second time. Leave her, don't, don't force her. Let her, let it. Let's, she can't do it yet. Yeah. Just stay there, man. Don't let these bullies do that to you. Stay there. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Sir. No, I would not do that. You're going to get hurt, hurt helping her. And it's not, she's under the anointing. Leave her go under the anointing. Sir, please.
Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. You're the God that healeth me, I tell you that. You're the God. You are the God. That healeth me. Come on, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. My healer. You sent your word. You sent your word. And healed my disease. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. My You are the God yes. that He let me. You are the Lord. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are. Quickly. You sent your word. Oh, this mighty touch. And heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and heal my disease. Hallelujah. You are the Lord, my healer. Hallelujah. Oh, the power of the Holy Ghost is here. Hallelujah. That might just... Come on, hallelujah. Such a move here. Hallelujah. Such a move here. This mighty touch is, oh, this mighty touch. Hallelujah. Oh. Ah. Hallelujah. 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 I, I want to chime in here, guys. I want to chime in here just for a minute. I, I, I feel this so strong that there's, there's a couple ladies here, and I'm trying to be sensitive to this, but, but there's an abortion in your past. There's an abortion there, and you just can't. You, you, you got past it, but not over it. You can get past something, but not over something. And you're here tonight. And this is your night. This is your night. If you'll get up here, I don't know how many of you there are, but I know there's at least a couple. If you'll get up to this altar tonight, God's going to get the victory over this. this you, you've suffered for the last time with this. Come quickly. I'm not going to wait long. Come quick. Here comes a lady right here. Is there another one coming? Hurry, hurry, hurry. I'm waiting. Hurry. I believe there's three. I heard the word three. 
That means there's two more. Come quickly. Don't, don't miss this. Don't miss this miracle moment. Here comes another one. Here comes another one. Come, come. Come on, give God a big shout. Give God a big shout. Come on. Put your hands on your belly. Put your hands on your belly. By the Holy Ghost. You've already been forgiven. Price has already been paid. This touch is simply to break this yoke, to stop the tear of the talking snake. This will no longer have power over you. No longer power over you. No longer. Tell her no more. No more power over her. Everything healed. The mind, the womb, every part healed. God's going to give her a supernatural love for children. And she'll be involved with children's ministries until the day she meets Jesus. Oh, my, the power on this lady getting delivered. So, somebody. Somebody help God tonight. Give him a mighty praise in this place. Come on, put your hands up. Say, let those hostages go. Let him go. Let him go. Let those hostages go. Let him go now. 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 Come on, give God a shout. Come on. That shot over right into the tunnels. Do you hear me tonight? I saw the tunnels when I said that. It's knocking somebody right off their stool. I'm gonna, I can't wait to go home and watch the news. I'm going to see the news tonight. What's, ma'am, when you were here for the abortion that you had, how long ago was this? Thanks for coming up. I appreciate it so much. Put your hands up. Mm. When I touch you, there's going to be a compassion from heaven hit you that you've never experienced. This is not not of this earth can you find this. You can't find this love anywhere. But God's going to use this to expand you, to give you a burden for babies. You're going to really witness to the cleansing power of the blood that's going to hit your life. I mean it. I mean you're going to be in demand to help young ladies especially. You might want to get to meet Monica over here. This probably would be a good place to begin. Put those hands up. We give God praise. We thank you, mighty Jesus. Oh, the power's all over this lady. The Lord says tonight that he washes you clean. Though your sins were crimson, now they're whiter than snow. They're whiter than white. And you're going to turn this around and use it as a badge of honor. That you're the one that got away. And now you're going back in to bring the prisoners out. You're going in to bring them out. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. Wow, wow. One, two, three. Uno, do, three. Right here. Wow. Amazing. Don't leave yet because we're going to start this service real soon. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Phil knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Precious. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's all sing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands up, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Derek, why don't you come up here and help us? Come up here and help us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come 
on, I want you to raise those voices. Come on, uh, hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, give me that guy in the black T-shirt right there. You, hurry. Hallelujah. Right here. Hands up. Touch this husband again. Touch him again. Touch him again with that. My, oh, the power on this guy right here. Wow. Wow. He may be sleeping right there where he fell, right there. Wow. This is the adopted daughter? Yes. What's her name? Sierra. Who? Sierra. Sierra. That's a beautiful name. Let this little girl be touched by the anointing. Oh, this might be. Oh, wow. Pastor Phil, I'll tell you what, this is something else here. What's your name here, young man? You're in the school. Walter. You're going to the school. Yes, sir. What are you planning to do with your life? I don't know yet. That's why you came here. Yes, sir. It's only six weeks long, though. No, seven. We got seven Okay, more. seven. I'm sorry. I missed it by a week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God help me. I missed it by one week. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. So what do you want to do? Though you have to have some idea of what you want to do. I don't know. Yeah, I just been waiting on God. You know, um, I know I just love people. You know, helping people and doing whatever God want me to do. You know. Where do you come from? I'm um, Bradenton. Oh, you live. You're from Bradenton. Yes, you sir. Come, you didn't come far, did you? No, sir. But I've always been in church. Um, I go to a Pentecostal church. You go to a Pentecostal church? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, to be a leader, you got to come out from among people. Yes. You can't be afraid to be alone. Yes. To be criticized, misread, unmisunderstood. You're going to change dynamics around you, young man. You're going to change dynamics. You're the black man that people's not going to be afraid of. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I used to go to this church. Listen to me. When they see yes, you coming, they're not going to hide. Okay. Amen. They're not going to say, oh, that guy's going to do something bad. There's something that's going to be about you that's going to disarm people to listen to you. He came to Christ in this church as a yes. young boy. Oh. We bust him in from the community. Yes. So he's got roots here, and now God's going to raise him up. Yes. Come on, somebody give God Hallelujah. a shout. The power of the Holy Ghost. The black man that nobody's afraid of. Amazing. Amazing. I don't mean that in a bad way. I just That's what came. That's what I said. Amazing, amazing presence, amazing presence. Somebody's right shoulder just got healed. Who's that right? Just got healed. Who is that? Just got healed. I heard it pop. Just got healed. Who is that? The right shoulder just got healed. Is that you, big guy? Was that you? Who is that? This right shoulder just popped. I'm waiting. I'm not waiting long. Is that you? Who is it? It's right. It's not left. I know my differences. I know right and left. <laughs> it, it got, got a lot of pain in those And shoulders. now it's not there. No. Is that amazing or what? It's gone. <laughs> That's the power on you right there. That's the power on you right there. That's the power on you. Lord, I love you. Yes, and saying that. Come on, you, you are. are to be praised. You, you are. 
worthy. Come on, sir. Come on, worthy to be praised. Everybody, Lord, I love you. Let's sing it. Lord, I love you. Thank you, dear Jesus. What brings you to here? What brings you to here? Her mom and my shoulder. My mom is in Brazil. Her left. She in cannot Brazil. see from her left eye. But did that? Excuse me. Did that person call that gentleman up here, back here? <laughs> <laughs> Could somebody get that lady a phone? There's got to be one Christian here that will let her use her phone. Oh, my God. <laughs> Alas, I lost the axe head, Master. I lost the axe head. Put your hands up. I give you praise. I give the Holy Ghost space here. He's waiting for a... Oh, that's, that's powerful. That's, that's it. He's waiting for that signal from both of you. She just gave it. Everything's about surrender. It's all about how much of him do I have? No. How much of me does he have? How much of me does he have? I'm all. Oh. Wow. You got him? I got Carl on speaker. Tell him. Ask him how it is. Honey, how's your back? It's so so. So, so, no, we're claiming healing. Come on, you got to hear heal. Don't beat him up. Don't do that. I love you. Oh. <laughs> hey, we just, we were saying a prayer for you earlier. Wanted to check and see how the back's feeling. Okay, appreciate it. How's it feeling? It's so, so, I mean, it comes and goes. It, how, was that right now? Is it come or gone? Uh, it's leaving. You, you married the right woman. She's here believing for you. That's pretty, pretty special. I know that. That's pretty special. Yep. Yep. She sure does. Thanks for sharing her with us tonight, gang. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Love you, honey. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you, you watch. You watch. Yes, I know. I know. That, that unlocked something. Yes, it unlocked amen. it. Yes, I know. Beautiful. Yes, I love it. Hallelujah. I love Thank it. You, Thank you, brother, for Lord. What's this guy down here doing? Come on, sir. You, gotta, you look like you're having trouble walking there. What happened? A fake leg? Was it a wooden leg? An artificial leg. Prosthesis, okay. So what but, do you uh, do? But well, a week before last, we had this tent at a fair. It was called Answer Two Questions. You're going to heaven, and like 375 teenagers gave their lives to the Lord and um, had to call an ambulance. <laughs> I had to call an ambulance to come get me because uh, something in my stomach ruptured and my stomach blew way out like wow. big and uh, and I still got a little bit of the hernia left. That's okay. That's okay. And uh, I'm just a man of God doing what he tells me to do. We're glad you spent a little bit of time with us tonight. Thanks for coming tonight. 
And we appreciate it. And we appreciate it. Put your hands up, sir. Master, touch him completely. Make him strong. Reward him for all of his efforts. Put back into him the very strength he's given out. Let his, he- his heart never stop beating till you say so. Never. There'll be no heart attacks and no strokes. He will live out his days. Naturally, he will live out his days. Mm. Psalm 90, he will live out his days. Mm, 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 mm. I thank you for just cleansing every part of this body. Mm. Anything blocked, open it up. We just give you the praise. Just, oh, oh, this power. Oh, my word. Cover, yeah, cover him, guys. Cover. Can you put a jacket over him or something? Or? There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow, what, what a night this has been. I'm telling you what. Um, I know we're here tomorrow morning. How many can make tomorrow morning? Can you make it tomorrow morning? And tomorrow night, I, I'm telling you, listen to me. Tomorrow night, every one of you, if you say you have Facebook friends, or you should call them or text them or something tonight. I believe tomorrow's going to be even stronger than tonight. I didn't know this meeting was going to go this way. I just saw those people out of state that, that caused the trouble here tonight. <laughs> All those people were from North Carolina and where in Baltimore or wherever else. Yeah, yeah. Wow, and this lady here from, well, she's from New Zealand, right? Do you know Winky Prattney? Winky Prattney? Have you heard of Winky Prattney in New Zealand? Christ Church. Christ Church? Yeah, Christ Church. Okay. Yeah, I came from New Zealand. We saw Sir just uh, in, the, in the TV, you know. And uh, we just, uh, my second daughter, Mary here. Second daughter, just uh, the young one. She mm. married in Tampa, and we just visit her. I don't know what he said, but I like it. Come on, say amen. It's God's will. It's God's will to meet you, sir. Beautiful. I love it's it. It's God's will. I think he said he saw, the, saw me on TV. And, yeah, wow. we saw in New Zealand the TV, you know. We know. But we Norman, how are you feeling? <laughs> Thank you, sir. A release in you, the rest of you. Sharon, how are you feeling? Warm and tingly. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. How you doing over here, ma'am? You okay? You all right? That's you. I'm talking to you. You okay? Yes, I need, I need a lot of healing. Would you say I'm receiving it? Excuse me? I'm receiving healing. I'm receiving healing. <laughs> Get out of my need. I receive. Come on, I receive. Uh-huh. Say it, I receive. I'm receiving tonight. The portion he has for me tonight. Mm. Amazing. Amazing. What happened? I got a carotid artery. Uh huh. And it's 90% blocked. Okay. And I'm supposed to go in for a blood test tomorrow. Tomorrow? And they're going to do an operation. I wouldn't have them do anything until you take an x ray. Well, they did take that. Come on, say these words. I, I know this sounds so 101, so simple. But say these words with me I have been, I have been. sitting. In this anointing, in this anointing. All, evening. all evening. If you sit in a bar filled with smoke, what are you going to smell like? Oh. Oh. You've been sitting in the anointing watching one miracle after another. What, what's, what do you think's jumping on you tonight? Huh? I can't hear you. I mean, this, this, I, I have, it has to be out there because it was too strong for it to be contained around this altar. I'm telling you, I, I think I know by now when something is strong. What do you have there, Monica? What do you have there? That's your mother? 
Well, she's got a belt on. She's got a wheelchair. Bring her over here. My God. What's the matter with your mother? The anointing's so strong. We're going to find out in a second here. That's for sure. Some back pain, arthritis, uh, corroded artery, shoulder pain. Affliction, uh, profound hearing loss. And Why are you spinal. jumping like that? Is because that... the anointing oh, is so oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I think that it's because I've judged people all my life. Uh -huh. And I feel that a lot of that's from that. Huh. I'm learning about that just recently. So you're being released from all that. I have. I've repented. You've repented. Uh huh. There's a strange word in the Bible right there, repented. I think it means the same thing in Greek and Hebrew. Come on, the same thing. Change your course, change your mind, change your heart. Yes, I'm only lying because of her prayers. Yeah. <laughs> this is Monica Satcher. She has a great ministry here locally. I don't know if you know about Monica, but uh, she hits all the, she goes right into bars, right in the strip clubs, brothels. Strip clubs. She, goes, she has a team of people who goes into strip clubs, goes back in and rescues girls, leads them to Jesus. And it's an amazing ministry, Monica does. Amazing. And you're expanding, right? You're expanding? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We've had 7,000 salvations in seven years. We're in five states. We have seven outreaches in Florida. Amazing. Reaching amazing. 500 women a month. And you go right into strip clubs. Mm-hmm. Yep. In, 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 in the dressing rooms, in the brothels. Sometimes the DJs will be like, the church ladies are here tonight. The church ladies are <laughs> so here. so funny. <laughs> All those saved men hiding under the <laughs> table. <laughs> come on, say the need is the call. The need is the call. Don't wait for, the, for you to come up with something, the need. There's needs out there. There's people that are groping in darkness. They can't get out. They don't know how to help themselves. They go to a dead church, the church that don't believe in the gifts or supernatural, whatever, and they don't, they don't know where to go. Be that person. Be that person that has living water flowing out of you. You may be the only spirit-filled thing they see the rest of their life. You can make a difference. We're going to close pretty soon here. I want to take that offering that Pastor Phil said he gave me permission to do. So I wait a minute, I want to do that, but I want to have you up at this altar tonight. And I want, I want to consecrate, consecrate your hands tonight. Yes. We're going we're gonna to just do something a little different around this altar with all of you before you go. But right now, if you could do me a great favor, you know, we, you know, we need your help to continue to do what we do. What do you do, Billy Burke? Just what we did. You know, we, we take this ministry, we go all over the world with it, and television, and we're just helping as many people as we can before the great catching away takes place. Come on, see that great catching away is coming so, so soon. Catherine Kuhlman used to say, I don't want to be here one five seconds. She would say that to me, Billy, young Billy, I don't want to be here one five seconds when that, when that restraining force is lifted. Because that's when all hell breaks loose. It's, it seems like it's breaking loose now. There's still restraint. There's still some law. There's still some conscience, but it's being eroded. They're cutting the heads off babies right in front of their parents and raping women right in front of their husbands. It's not just overseas people. It's all over the world. There's a searing of the conscious. This, this, this restraining force is being lifted for people to do what they want to do. It's a sign that the master is coming ever ever so soon. Come on, give God, give God a big, big shout. Put your hands up all over the place. I'm asking every single person to contribute tonight. There shouldn't be one person here. Maybe we didn't get to pray for you, but I still believe that there's a touch that came your way. I'm asking you for help. I'm asking you to hear the heartbeat of God. God likes and loves healing broken people. Sick people, lost people. It's not about people. It's not about buildings. We need buildings. We do. But it's about people. It's not about titles. It's about people. It's about people. You know, he just wants to get into as many people before this great catching away takes place. 
Because once you leave the earth, there's no, there's no second chances. There's no middle. There's no purgatory. There's none of that that really exists. You open up your eyes and you're somewhere. Where are you? We know they're not in the grave. Your body's in the grave, but you're not there. You're, you're with the Lord or you're at that other place. And tonight I'm, I'm asking you to help me stand before more people before that trumpet sounds, before we hear that swirling of wind. And maybe the next time you see lightning, it won't be lightning. It might be the coming of him in the eastern sky. It might be. That's, we're that very close. The next time you hear thunder, it may not be thunder. It may be him coming on the white horse. We, don't, we just don't know how close we are. We are very, very close. These are the days of Elijah. These are those days. So I'm asking you tonight to, to get that checkbook, that credit card, cash. How do you want to do this? I'm, I'm not after your money. I'm after a means. I'm not after your money. I, I'm, I'm not, I, I, won't, I promise I won't even use it. Per, I don't need your money personally. God has blessed me. Your money is for mission. Your money is to touch more people like these people and people that have, they're not facing a good diagnosis tonight. The man in Miami, they brought him in a wheelchair, paralyzed for, I don't know how long, bedridden for, I don't know how long. He said, I had to come down to this service. And he walked right out of the wheelchair. Walked right out of the wheelchair. And... And, you know, someone would say, well, his life is over. He's in his 70s, whatever, whatever. I don't care how old you are. You don't want to feel bad. How many do best to feel good no matter how old you are? Let me see. When you're cold, you want to be warm. When you're hot, you want to be cool. As long as you're alive, you want to live life. You want to taste your food. You want to smell coffee. You know, you want to go to bed and wake up. I mean, all of those things are taken for granted. And you want to make sure that you pass down your belief system of faith, the spirit of faith to your children and grandchildren. And you pray for them with purpose. We're going to do some of that tonight. But right now, I'm asking you, please sit down. Let's take this offering quickly. But I'm asking every single person, even those ones out of state, even those ones out of state, <laughs> to give in this offering that I make the checks payable. To Christian Retreat, use the envelopes. I'm going to ask the ushers to just make sure everybody's got an envelope again because I don't know if there's an envelope on your seat still. But use the envelopes. You can use them for the credit card as well or the QR code. We'll go to a secure app and make your checks out to Christian Retreat, not to Billy Burke. We will uh, precede you from here and then give one check to Brother Billy in the ministry. I want to just say this to you, too, as you're preparing for this. Come to all these services. There's no better place for you to, to go. You've been percolating in here for a couple hours. Uh, get her, get her. Clear your schedule. Come out tomorrow morning. Her, come out tomorrow night. And just can't see a better use of your time, you know, to just uh, get the full dose of what God has for you. And by the way... If you don't have a place to go Sunday morning, come Sunday morning. I feel led, and God confirmed it to me tonight, uh, to make Sunday morning a testimony uh, service. And I'll, I'll deliver some word on that, too. And uh, I'm just going to line you up and let you testify. You know, the best way to keep your healing is to declare it. Declare it. Mm -hmm. Even after you leave here tonight, declare it. Call somebody. Mm -hmm. Tell your friend. Tell your spouse what God did. Because the enemy will try to take it from you. You're not going to let that happen. Sunday morning, too, we have a special guest singer coming in. Some of you know Sue Dodge. Uh, oh, she's my. She's sung along with Bill Gaither many, yeah. many years. Just last year, she was inducted into the Sue Southern Dodge, Gospel you know Hall Sue of Fame. Dodge, yeah. She'll be here to sing a couple songs, be a part of our service. But most importantly, I, I want to just give you an opportunity, especially those of you a part of our church here, just to declare what God has done. Because I just want you to hang on to it. Give the devil a headache. Let it be your most authentic sermon. People want to know. They don't care what church you go to or your doctrine. But if you've received a touch from God here and now on the earth, they want to know that. And uh, we want you to testify of it and know how important your testimony is. So that will be Sunday morning. Our service starts at 1045. 
the children worship down here in the worship service, and then they go to their classes, and there's just a real spirit of freedom to receive from God every time the doors are open here. Take your envelope and uh, give a thank you gift of what God has done in your life, and expect God to continue giving. Tomorrow morning, it's at 1030, and then tomorrow night at 7 o'clock again. Well, Amen. Make sure you know the right times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Now, isn't God good? <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I love just the, the freestyle. You know, we don't have to follow a program yeah. here, and you have a freedom. You, you just give to it. You do what God you tells you. You give it, not took it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. No. But that's how you receive yes. from the Lord, too. Isn't he a great pastor? Isn't yeah. he a great pastor? Hallelujah. So th did they bring the offering down? Or how no, we're going to pass okay. the, the bucket. So let's pass that, and then I'm going to have you all come down. If anybody sneaks out, you'll be arrested in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, by the way, there, there are no rooms available in Miracle wow. Manor. I usually can say, you know, uh, wow. that if you want to stay, you can. But, um, yeah, it's all filled up. We do multiple things here at the same time yeah. by the grace of God. And this is holy ground. I want you to know, you know, every yeah. seat that you're sitting in has been anointed so many times it probably smells like olive oil. But uh, <laughs> we just want to yeah. steward the presence of God on this campus so that you can receive from him when you come. Beautiful. And uh, I know many ministers that come, they say they, they, they see the move of God so freely here. It's easy to, to preach here, to speak here. Because this place is prayed up. So you'll receive. So there's no distractions. Receive. That's good, Pastor. Hallelujah. That's wonderful. You're getting really good at this. You know that. <laughs> About time, right? What a gifted man. What a gifted man. Um, did, they, did they done the offering yet? They're still, they're still they're, oh, they're still? They're still okay. filling out yeah. the envelopes. We'll just give you a little more time. Oh, wonderful. You know, and uh, let not your heart be troubled. If you didn't get up to receive a touch tonight, you know, you're in the right place at the right time. And uh, tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, I just uh, really feel, you know, uh, receive while he's near. You know, your faith has been built up tonight, and you can receive tomorrow morning. Just don't get anxious. Just be in that spirit to receive. And many be getting breakthroughs. Amen. Yeah, I love to see it, Pastor, because I, I know a lot of the people, and I know the backstory. Okay. And um, I just love when people receive, and it makes them stronger. It makes them a testimony, a testimony, mm. preaching on that. I have, I have a friend in Puerto Rico. He's not there no more. He pastored a very large church there. So he would bring me in once a year in January. He, in Puerto Rico, they call it January, January. And he said, I bring you in. They get healed. Then they work for me all year. <laughs> I said, I don't know if I like that motive, but I will work with it. And, uh, you know, that next breath you take, that strength you need. You know, he, he wants you to, whether it's a miracle in motion or whether it's instantly. Some of you will be healed before you close your eyes tonight. Amen. You were sitting in this all evening. Come on, say all evening. All evening. Marinating, Marinating in the miracle presence. presence. It's got to have an impact. So I'd check your eyes, your ears. I'd check everything. I mean, everything, your urinary tract, everything. Amen. Now don't make any noises over that. I didn't... I didn't. Put your hands up all over the place. Come on, say, Holy Ghost. I'm about to prosper beyond my wildest dreams. I've been sitting in this all night. I sowed seed in the midst of this all evening. It's got to come back big time. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to catch anything but more of God. And He will. Prove himself to me and to all the people that know me. 
my family, my friends, my church friends, even people that don't like me are going to have to reconcile. God must have blessed them. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm going to give God all the glory. Come on, give him a mighty, mighty, major shout. I'm going to meet them right here. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, and by the way, we are renovating 40 more guest rooms over here. Oh, you wow. know, we, some of you are in the guest rooms that we renovate 100 of them are already renovated. But we need more room here for more of this and for more of you to come. <clears throat> Amen. Saying that to those Come watching. when you're ready. Come when you're ready. Come on down. Right here. Oh, come let's on pass the buckets first before you get up. Oh, you didn't pass the bucket yet? Let the ushers. Oh. Let the ushers ush. Wait for the bucket. Wait for yeah. the bucket. <laughs> Don't rush the bucket. Come to me. Yeah, let's make sure you get them what do you need? picked up before we come up. Okay. Remember, too, when we dismiss, uh, What's her name? Pastor Billy has a book table out the west lobby, this direction. We have food out there, too. Thank you for the healing of this girl, the blood. Let there be a purging. Hallelujah. That's it right there. That's it. That's this it. service that's was it. recorded. It's, it. it's available it. on DVD or wow, CD, whatever it. works best for you. Up here, Derek. Come on up and So once you've passed the bucket, you can come on down. But let the uh, okay. ushers okay. do their work me, before you with everybody first here. get up pray. in your row, okay? Those of you coming down, come as close you, down as you can to make room for others to come. Hallelujah. Thank you. Boy, I was. I, you, you're right on time with that. Thank oh, my. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my. Come on, press in. Hurry, press in. It's 9.35. We want to have you out of here by 11.30. Come on, press in. <laughs> press in. I knew that would get your attention. <laughs> put your hands up. Come on, put your hands up. If you knew how bad, how much God wants to live in you and work through you. And the Bible says he who began a good work in you. Not through you, in you. To what extent you let God work in you, he will work through you. And there's no limits. My prayer for these next, these three days, tonight and tomorrow all day, is that some of you here get a real burden, an assignment. It doesn't have to be big and famous, just something in your heart that is doable for you right now. There's somebody you're called to. There's somebody you can help. There's something you can do in your neighborhood, your church, your city. There's something. We're not just floating downstream waiting for the end of the world or the next president. Whoever the next president is can't help. America's broke. Politics can't fix what we need. We need a revival. Come on, we need. We need. But that revival begins with each one of us. It begins with each one of us having a a sense of there's more I can do. It may not seem like much to you, but every little bit helps. It matters. Everybody has some sphere of influence. And that sphere of influence will grow as you're faithful where you are. But you may have to come out from among them. Who is them? People that just are oblivious. They just watch the news. Fox, CNN, MSNBC, social media. They just stay caught up in all the news. God wants you to make news because of the love you have. Because you meet a certain lady once a week and you help her get her groceries. This isn't about you being famous or being all, known all over the world. I mean, if God's going to do that, great. But what he's looking for right now is all the people around you they live every day with no encouragement. Live every day with no one giving them any hope. 
that they can have a better day. And I know, and you say, yeah, but you don't know where I've come from. Just beat the curse by being the opposite of your curse. Say, by the grace of God. Say that. By the grace of God. See, right there, that removes all of your ability. By the grace of God, I'm going to care more for every single person that confides in me, that tells me their sad story, that expresses their need. I will never again be that priest or that Levite that passes the wounded man by. I will be that Samaritan. I got some oil, and I got some wine. And by the grace of God, I will stop, and I will listen, and then I'll push that medicine in them. If it takes some of my money and some of my time, by the grace of God, I'm going to do it. Revival is going to start. It's going to start with me. I desire to be a changed individual. I'm letting the devil know tonight there's a new me emerging. And I will be unrecognizable to you. And I'm telling you tonight, I'm done giving you free roaming. I will bind you. I will put you under my feet. I'll put you behind me. I'll put the blood of Jesus all over you. And if you go near my children, I'll break your power. I'll live for Jesus, and I'll do more than I've ever done. I live and move. I have my entire being in the master himself. Jesus, I just said all these words, but I need your grace and the anointing to back it all up. I'm getting hungry. I'm getting thirsty. I could become a dangerous person with the anointing and the Word of God. I'm about to make a difference, and I give you all the praise. Come on, let's give God all this shout. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, give him all the praise. How how Jesus loves, how Jesus loves, how Jesus loves. How Jesus loves. How Jesus loves, loves. that's the song. Jesus, 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 how, how Jesus loves. One more time, how Jesus loves. Come on, how. Put those hands up. We're going to sing it one more time, everybody. How? How? Yes! Now, with those hands, look at your hands. Those hands have gotten you in a lot of trouble in your life. Look at them. They've touched the wrong things. 
They've been used for the wrong purposes. In some circles, they're a major weapon. Hands have hurt people. Hands have held back blessing. Hands have kept back encouragement. But tonight we want to consecrate your hands fresh. And if you'll go with this, I really believe in the next coming days, weeks, opportunity is going to come your way you never dreamed possible. Because we're going to get the curse off these hands. Do you ever say things like, I'd like to take him by the neck? Or I'm going to give him the right hand of fellowship. If I get my hands on her, mm, put your hands up all over the place. Come on, say, Lord, these are my hands. hands. You gave them to me. me. They're an extension of my heart. heart. As Pilate washed his hands, hands, he was washing his heart. heart. I can't get to my heart. heart. It's locked up inside of me. me. But my hands... Carry out my emotions and my feelings. And tonight I want to give you these hands. I'm asking you to redeem them, to wash my hands and purify my heart that they may be used to help people. Every color, every race, every kindred, and every tribe of every age, that there be no one exempt from who these hands can help that I would pray for them that I would hand them money I would give them food I would give them a ride I would help them in a practical way in a spiritual way but these hands will be used for miracles and for groceries for everything that I can get my hands on that I can be a distributor of the deep love of God. Redeem my hands tonight for the master's use in the name of Jesus. Come on, give God a big, big, big shout. Come on, a really big one. Come on, I said a really, really big one. Now, before you leave, here's what I would say to you if I wanted to say the best possible thing. The meeting is over, but the anointing is not. So that means when you leave here, whatever you're going to do, eat or fellowship, whatever, you still have time before you close those eyes to go to sleep tonight. And I would just affirm. See, if you can't affirm you, why would God affirm you? I believe I'm healed. I believe I received tonight. I believe my vision's getting better. My digestive tract. I'm going to sleep better. I'm going to be more positive. I've been one negative individual. I don't know how I have any friends left. But that's about to change. I will be the man and the woman that throws that branch into that bitter pool. I'm done compromising. Get out of my way. Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. Come on. Let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Can we do that Lord's Prayer? We'll cl- we say amen. We're, we're dismissed. Our Father, we Hallowed be. Hallowed be thy name. Come on, thy kingdom. Thy kingdom. Thy will. Thy will be done. On earth.
give us this day. Give us this day. somebody shout hallelujah hey listen tell somebody about these services don't be stingy and hoard it for yourself tell a friend tell a neighbor bring them back tomorrow morning and tomorrow night those of you watching if you're within driving distance get out here it's so much better if you can get here and uh we'd like to meet you god bless you everybody take your time leaving but hurry back okay blessings to you By the way, we have a 24-hour prayer room just beyond that wall there. If you want to go take a look at it, it's got an outside entrance. It's open 24 hours, seven days a week if you ever need to come and just pray.